In this SwiftUI tutorial, we will continue our development work where we finished in the previous class. Our goal is to create a complete design of the home screen. So when we tap on the main button on the onboarding screen, then this elegant and aesthetically pleasing design shows up. As you may notice, the home screen layout consists of three parts, similar to its counterpart. It's pretty simple, so it shouldn't be too hard to create it, I guess. During the development, we will get familiar with the new button styles in the latest release of SwiftUI. And to make this lesson slightly more challenging for you, we will also learn how to create a reusable UI component. All right, without further ado, let's open Xcode and start coding. Home screen. First of all, please open the home view file. Then scroll down to the body section. Next, we will replace the text view with some helpful comments. Enter the following code. New comment. Mark. Header. New comment. Mark. Center. New comment. Mark. Footer. Okie dokie. Let's start the development with the first section, shall we? Header section. First, navigate the cursor to the header and enter this code. Spacer. Great. Now we will add a new image with some modifiers after it. Enter. Image. Character. Dash. Two. Resizable. Scale to fit. Padding. Super. With this bit of code, we are almost done creating the header section. The only thing that is still missing here is the ring design. But don't worry because we will work on it soon, at the end of this short lesson. Now, let's jump to the next section. Center section. All we need to do is to enter a well-formatted quote here. So, let's do it. Text. The time that leads to mastery is dependent on the intensity of our focus. Font. Title. 3. Font weight. Light. Foreground color. Secondary. Multiline text alignment. Center. Padding. Awesome. The center area with this text is done. We can move on to the last section. Footer section. As you know, there is a button in the bottom region that we previously created. And we can see the default button design on the preview. The accent color always determines the color of the button. Please keep in mind the following rule. Suppose there is no custom accent color defined in the project's assets catalog. In that case, each UI element inherits a default color from the system, which Apple may change any time in the future, since we created a custom blue color. Therefore, we can see this used by this button. Before we make this default look more prominent, we first need to push up the header and center sections. To do that, we need to add a new spacer above this button. So let's do it. Spacer. Great job so far. We can finally focus on the button after adding more space between the bottom and the center area. First, we will add a new system symbol before the text inside this button. Enter this code. Image. System name. Arrow. Dot. Triangle. Dot. Two. Dot. Circle path. Dot. Circle. Dot. Fill. Image scale. Large. This long declarative name accurately describes the symbol image that we needed. Please, notice that we did not have to wrap the image and the text views into a horizontal stack container. The reason behind that. When we use two or more UI elements inside as a button label, then SwiftUI automatically renders the horizontal stack layout for it. How cool is that? I just love this developer-friendly behavior, and I hope you do too. After adding an image to this button, we can work on the text's appearance a little bit. Let's add these two new modifiers to it, shall we? Font. System. Title. 3. Design. Rounded. Font weight. Bold. The appearance of this text is similar to the button on the onboarding screen. It's much better now. However, I still find it less attractive. Can we make it better somehow? Fortunately, Apple engineers are continuously improving the SwiftUI framework. And the latest iteration of it gives us a brand new button system with many handy features. Button styles. That's being said, 
We can improve the button's design by adding some specific modifiers to this. To do that, please navigate to the end of the button as I do. Then enter the following code. Button style. Bordered, prominent. Button border shape. Capsule. Control size. Large. And, there it goes. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? These modifiers are quite self-explanatory. Do you agree with me? And with this little code, the button conforms to the overall visual design of this application. How cool is that? Okay, I have to admit. It wasn't too hard at all. But you know what? Are you ready to do something new? Something interesting in the rest of the tutorial? Right. Then let's create a reusable UI component and have some fun with it. User Interface Component Our goal is to create a reusable UI component from the existing ring design, such that we can embed this ring with different parameters into the onboarding and the home screens. We start by opening the onboarding screen. After that, we need to find the ring design in this file. Go to the center section and carefully select out the entire code of the inner ZStack container. As I show you, we need to cut out this code snippet to the clipboard. It's easy peasy so far. The next step is to create a new SwiftUI file in the Views folder. So, let's do it. Give this SwiftUI file the following name and save it. Circle, Group, View. Now, in this file, we will replace the welcome message with the code from the clipboard. Are you done? Perfect. If you followed my instructions carefully, then we should see the ring on the preview. And, there is the first obstacle that we need to overcome through. The color of the ring is white. That's why we cannot see it on the preview. Of course, we can switch the device's appearance from light to dark in the preview, but we can do it even better. The better solution is to prepare the preview for testing our design in a different environment. To make it happen, please scroll down to the preview section. As I show you, we need to embed the circle group view into a new ZStack container. After that, let's add a new color view before the circle group view. Enter this code. Color. Color blue. Ignore safe area. All. Edges. All. With this code, we can simulate the onboarding view's blue background. And with that, the ring has been revealed for us in the preview. Now we can focus on more advanced things. Ring Component Our ultimate goal with this ring component is the following. We want this UI component to be used in multiple environments on top of different background colors. To achieve this goal, we need to create two properties representing the color and opacity attributes of the ring component. So, let's create these new properties right now. Enter the following code at the top. Add, state, var, shape color, color. Add, state, var, shape opacity, double. Now, let's hold on a sec and talk about what's happening there. First, we added state property wrapper to these properties. With that, we can change the values of these properties. The second important thing that we keep in mind is that we did not initialize these properties with any default values. And this is what we wanted exactly. We want to add particular color and opacity values to this ring later on. For now, we just told the program that there are color and opacity properties without any default value. This code works without any problem, however. The preview is broken because it doesn't know what to do with the missing empty properties. Can you see the red error sign in the preview? Xcode gives us more information about this error if we click on the red shape as I show you. Please, scroll down a little bit and click on this red button. As I told you before, the preview needs more information about these color and opacity parameters. If we click on the Fix button, then we can insert some mock data, and the errors will be dismissed instantly. So, let's do it. Enter. Shape Color. White. Shape Opacity. 0.2. The error messages have gone. And if you paid attention to the preview, you should see that nothing has changed so far. It happens because, so far, we just created these empty properties. But we never told the program where we wanted to use them. 
I'm pretty sure that you have already figured out that the next step is to change the stroke modifier in each circle view. Having said that, please jump to the first circle and replace the color value with our new property. Enter this code. Circle, stroke, shape color, opacity, shape opacity. Then let's jump to the second circle and repeat the process. Circle, stroke, shape color, opacity, shape opacity. With the help of these properties, we can now modify the ring's look in every place where we want to embed this component. But enough with the talk, and let's see how it work in action, shall we? Reusable component. First, please switch back to the onboarding view. And let's embed our ring component before the image view, as I show you. Enter. Circle group view. Shape color. White. Shape opacity. 0 0.2. With this code, we got the same design as it was before. Now let's see how we can reuse this ring component again. This time we will embed it into the home view. So let's switch to this file. But before we do that, first, we will need to embed the image into a new container. So let's do it right now. Command plus click on the image name and let's select the embed in Z stack option from the context menu as I do. Now everything is ready to embed a new ring component beneath the illustration. Enter the following code. Circle group view. Shape color, gray. Shape opacity, 0 0.1. And there it is. As you can notice, this time, we added different colors and opacity values for this ring. And this is the way how we can develop a reusable user interface component with variable attributes. How cool is that? As you know the drill by now, we will test the application. You can either run it on your real device or use the simulator. Testing. After the launch, the first thing that we can see is one of the instances of the ring component. Again, this is the same design as it was before, but I want to emphasize one thing about it. Later on, we will add animation to it, but we will also make it interactive. Until then, let's check out how the completed home view, shall we? Let's tap on the red button at the bottom. And there it is. This design is pretty impressive. Do you agree with me? I hope that you enjoyed this SwiftUI tutorial. And I can tell you that this was just the beginning. You can think about the first three lessons as a warming up. From now on, we will add more interactivity and animations to this application. For example, we will have developed a fully functional custom button by the end of the following lecture. Such a great button that will really shine when users use it on their hands. Until then, happy coding and see you in the class.